Hey fourth graders, welcome to lesson 15. Today I want to tell you about a practice challenge that we have coming up. It's called March Madness. It's just like basketball, but it's for practicing your instrument. So starting on March 1st, you can make a plan to practice your instrument every weekday for 15 minutes at least, and then record your practicing on our March Madness practice chart. At the end of the month, on April 1st, no joke, on April 1st, you will submit your completed practice chart to me on Google Classroom. If you accept this challenge and if you meet the expectations for the challenge, you will win a special prize. Now, if you are one of the top five practicers in all of fourth grade, you will win a grand prize. And top practicer means that you practice the most total minutes for the month of March. So going above and beyond the 15 minute requirement, maybe even practicing on some weekends too. So stay tuned on Google Classroom for more information about our March Madness Challenge. Next, what are we learning about today in lesson 15? We're going to do a bow game called our spider crawl. Then we're going to be playing a familiar tune, Boil Them Cabbage Down, found in packet three, reading, standard notation, and bowing. We will also learn a bass line that can go along with Boil Them Cabbage Down. So if you have a sibling or a friend or a family member who also plays an instrument, you could pair up and play a duet. One person can play the melody of Boil Them Cabbage, and the other person could play the bass line. The bass line is super easy, just uses our open strings. And all of that will be bowing at the balance point. After that, we're going to move into our book work. We're going to be on page 18 today. I hope you might have a music stand that you can put your book on. It makes it a lot easier. On page 18, we're going to be doing four songs that show us how to read the note names G, F sharp, E, and of course our open D in standard notation. So please gather what you need for class and join me when you're ready. Starting with our bow game today, we're going to do the spider crawl as promised. So let's hold our bow at our balance point. Get your fingers just how you like them. Pinky dropped below for cellos, perched up for violinists. Soft, rounded fingers, flexed thumb like we learned last week. We get, did our knuckle turnovers looking for that mountain thumb. Today we're going to do a spider crawl. I want you to imagine that your right hand is like a spider crawling up the wall or crawling up this drain pipe. See how my fingers are moving slowly and controlled, one finger at a time. The thumb kind of leads and the rest of the fingers go after it. And I'm going really slowly. I'm not letting the bow slide through my hand. The purpose of the spider crawl is to develop strength in your bow hold fingers and to keep your hand in its best bow hold shape while you crawl. Now, if you would like to add a little bit of support, you might put your bow screw on your hand or your leg or the table while you're doing your crawl. So please pause and practice your bow spider crawl now. Next up, we're gonna be opening packet three on Google Classroom, and we're gonna be playing the song Boil and Cabbage Down in standard notation and with our bow. So please open up packet three right now and restart the video once you have found the cabbage song or Boil and Cabbage Down in packet three. Please listen while I play Boil and Cabbage Down with my bow, reading in standard notation. As we've learned this already, our first note is F sharp on the D string. Put my bow in the sweet spot at the balance point. Please listen while I play the song. Your 
turn to practice the song. If you'd like to rewind and watch me play it again, that's awesome. Uh, I want you to notice how I'm moving my elbow open as I bow across in my sweet spot. I am not moving my shoulder, so pay attention to that. Keep your bow nice and sticky to the string and open from the elbow. Put a little bit of weight in with your pointer finger on the bow hold. So please pause and practice your cabbage song and rejoin me when you're ready. Okay, next we're going to be learning that bass line that I was talking about at the top of the lesson. The bass line is provided as a super simple accompaniment to the melody, which we already know. The bass line only uses your open strings, D, G, and A. So it's really, really easy it would be so fun if you could play this as a duet with somebody else in your household or maybe a friend who plays another instrument. So please listen while I play the cabbage bass line. And you'll find this by scrolling down in your packet three. It's all open strings. So I start on my open D. Roll to open G. super simple cabbage bass line. Please pause and practice and try to incorporate it as a duet with somebody you know who plays a musical instrument. Next part of our lesson we're going to be moving to our Essential Elements book one. So please pause the video and get your book out open to your um, PDF packet for your Essential Elements book or Get your hard copy book ready with your music stand and join me on page 18. Here we are on page 18 in our books and we're practicing reading our standard notation while bowing on our instrument. So you might recall in the Boil, Boil Them Cabbage song that we just played from our packet, we saw some notes in standard notation, some new standard notation notes, F sharp, Fs, and G, B, S, E, and D. They were all in your packet. They kind of had, they had the note names along, so it was a little easier to read. Ooh, now in our book, the song Bowing G, it doesn't have the little note head letter given to us, but the song is called Bowing G. So this, fourth graders, number 54, is what your G note looks like in standard notation. This is your G on the D string. So please, let's come into playing position in five. Four, three, set up your note name G on the D string, two, and one, bow goes on the D string. Let's play number 54. Put your eyes on the music, ready, set, bowing G, here we go. Rest. position please. Look at number 54 again and look at where the note head is positioned on your staff. Ask yourself, is the note name G a line note or a space note? Line note or space note? And then on which line or on which space does it appear? If you're playing violin, I hope that you're saying, Miss Dagan, it is my second line note second line from the bottom. If you're playing cello, I hope you're saying it is my fourth space note all the way up at the top. Let's go to the next song. It's called Back and Forth. It means we're going to be playing G, 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 rest. Fees, 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 rest. G, G, fees, fees, G, fees, G. It's called Back and Forth because we're kind of oscillating back and forth between those two notes. So now you're seeing in your standard notation, oh, we're starting on G, that one from the song before, and then we're going one position lower on our staff. That's our F sharp. 
That's our F sharp fingering on our instrument. So come into playing position in five, four, three, two, one. Your first note is G, and then the note that's one step lower than that is going to be your F sharp. Lift off your finger to get to your F sharp. The song is back and forth. Ready, set, back and forth. Here we go. G. Rest. Feast. Rest. G. Feast. G. Feast. G. Go to rest position. Next song is called Down and Up. It means we're going G, G, Feast. E, E, Feast. G, G, Feast, Feast. E, Feast, G. It's called Down and Up. I want you to pay attention to whether the note heads are going lower or higher. They're going down or they're going up. The new note introduced here is our E, our first finger on the D string. And for the violinists, your E is going to be that bottom line note on your staff. For cellists, your E is going to be your third space. So let's play the song down and up, reading standard notation. Up, up, up in three, two, one, number 56. Ready, set, play along, here we go. G, G, Fies. Now E. Fies. G. Fies. E. Fies. G. Notice how E is in the lower position, then F sharp is in the middle, and then G is the higher one. So pay attention to how our notes go up and down. Next song is called Tribal Lament. Please listen while I play. You may like to point along to the notes while I'm playing, and even bonus points, point along and say or sing your letter names while I play. Tribal Lament. Follow along at home. Repeat. Bow lift. Okay, so you were hopefully pointing and singing along, and you may be thinking to yourself, ooh, Miss Dagan, what does that bow lift mean? If there's a special symbol at the end. Bow lift means, please reset your bow, circle it, and bring it back to the lower part of your bow, what would be the frog eventually right now underneath your hand. Circle and bring the bow back to the string. It usually occurs when we have two down bows in a row. I'm lifting and circling away from my instrument. My cellists, you're gonna do this. Circle your arm back. So that's what your bow lift means. I'd like everybody to pause and practice the tribal lament on their own. And don't forget to add in your bow lift at the end. That concludes lesson 15 for the week. Happy practicing, everybody, and please get excited about our March Madness Challenge that is coming up. It's been a big hit in past years, and it's been really exciting for students to see their progress and feel really, really good and strong about their playing after practicing every day for a whole month. Take care and see you next time.